greatest 9-11 ever? Or is it? Welcome to my new bestie, the, um, the ST. The ST then is this week's very, very special new limited edition Porsche 911. They do come along pretty regularly at the moment, don't they? It doesn't seem like five minutes since we first copped eyes on the GT3 RS. We've had the Dakar, the Sport Classic, various GT3s. And now we've got this thing, the birthday present. But as you can see, we're not at a racetrack. We're not on a rally stage, and we're certainly not poncing about on a Concours du Elegance lawn. No, we've come here because the ST is supposed to be the best modern 911 on one of those, a public road. Someone fetch some candles then. The Porsche 911 was born in 1963, so it's 60 years old this year. And if we're honest, it wouldn't have lasted that long if it wasn't so adaptable. You know, it can reinvent itself. It's happy to be turned into a race car or a rally car. It can pose about town if you like that kind of thing, or it can do the school run. But when Porsche came to build 1,963 pieces of birthday cake to celebrate that anniversary, they didn't bother with a great big active wing or with driving modes or with turbocharging or with four wheel drive or with all sorts of clever torque vectoring or electrification. No, when they built this, they shunned the new. Why did they do that? All those advances in tech that have been shoehorned into the 911 over the decades were left on the shelf. And if you ask GT boss Andreas Preuninger what the mood board was, he talks about a lightness and an agility you can feel in the seat of your pants. A car that will make you get up early on a Sunday morning, leave the motorbike in the garage and take this for a hoon instead. I'll tell you what, a biker would feel right at home with an engine this revy. 9,000 RPM from a four litre flat six. That will never fail to tickle my pickle. <laughs> but of course, we've seen those kind of numbers from 911s for a few years now. We've had very high revving engines in the GT cars. What's different here and what gives this a very different character to a GT3 Touring with a manual gearbox, Porsche's fitted a much lighter flywheel and a clutch that's half the weight of the one you get in a GT3 Touring. All of that saves about 11 kilos, but it's the sensations you get through the car that are completely different. You have to train your left leg to interact with a much snatchier, fightier clutch. Your hand needs to be quick and precise across this stubby little gear gate on top of this tiny little gear lever which looks like it came off a caterer. But the ST doesn't want to beat you up. Once you've got to grips with its highly strung powertrain, it's actually not all hardcore. The ride settings in particular have been totally reset for the ST. So in both modes, it's got fabulous control and balance, but none of the GT3's distracted, fighty steering that sniffs out tram lines and cambers and actually dissuades you from taking a hand off the wheel to change gear. Okay, I admit that the no filter, undiluted engine and gearbox grabs the headlines, but the ST's chassis is a proper hidden gem. And the steering, which is slightly faster than a GT3 Touring. Now I thought I would miss this car getting rid of rear wheel steering. After all, the 992 is a big car now. And I've got used to them tending to be fitted with rear steer, but they've got rid of it for this car to save six kilos from the back axle. And by doing that, they don't need such a heavy duty battery so they can fit a lithium ion one. And that saves another three or four kilos, all part of that 
virtuous circle, which is more fun than having a tight turning circle. And it's great steering as well. It's very linear, it's very direct. It's a really nice speed for using on the road. And I was talking to Andres Preuninger, Mr. Porsche GT car last night, and he made a very, very big claim. He says that this is his favorite Porsche steering, not just with electric power steering, but he reckons this is better than the old hydraulic stuff as well. Hate to disagree with him, but um, maybe a bit more driving. Now, talking of kit that you do get and you don't get, an ST, says ST there, as you can see, it costs 231,600 of your pounds. So when you drop inside, you would hope for lots of details to prove that it is the special one. And you might be a bit cross to see that there actually aren't. You get your gold 911 badge up here. It's not actual solid gold. Uh, that tells you what number your car is, which is quite cool, I guess. You get your bespoke, stumpy, short throw manual gear lever, real highlight there. Uh, the dials, they have green numerals as a nod to 911s of old. And if you're really geeky, you might have spotted this steering wheel is missing the mode switch, that little twister that normally sits here and gives you wet and sport and track mode. That's gone because the modes have gone because Mr. Preuninger says, this isn't a car for taking on track. We've set it up just so, and it's always in B road destroying mode. And if you are the sort of 911 buyer who fantasizing about being the toasted beans of your local cars and coffee meats, I don't know, maybe you want a different one because you've got to be a bit of a connoisseur to know this is a very special car. Let me show you the details. The clues are the carbon fiber doors with the big front wheel arch cut out and that lovely slash graphic coming down the side. They're lighter. They're a real pain to make actually, but exclusive to the ST. Other stuff then, well, you've seen the livery. They've been at the stickers, haven't they? But don't worry, you don't have to have it. You do have to have this little gurney flap, but it's functional and there's a bit of a story behind it. You see Andres Preuninger, Mr. Porsche GT cars. He was furious that the GT3 Touring's beautiful lines around the back were spoiled by this active wing opening up and just, well, looking a bit ugly. He called it a transformer when we asked him about it. So they've added this, so you get more downforce. And as a result, this doesn't open as far as on a GT3 Touring and it doesn't open as early. You have to be going much, much faster for this to pop up over 75 miles an hour. So that does a lot to make your ST look pretty. I'm not sure this does. You get a really big birthday badge saying it's 60 years of 911. And then another very important badge because this one tells people, no, it's not a GT3 Touring. It's not a 911R. It's an ST. Before you trot off to Wikipedia and swat up on the historic ancestor Porsche's crib the name off, the OG ST came from the summer of 69. It was a race ready version of the standard 911S of the day, with a stiffer chassis, lighter body panels, wider tyres and more power, but no wild aerodynamics. Its modern homage uses a carbon bonnet, roof, front wings and doors, the glass is thinner than usual, there's even carbon stiffening panels underneath, while ceramic brakes live inside magnesium wheels. All of that means that the 911 ST weighs 1380 kilos. It's about 40 kilos less than a GT3 Touring with a manual gearbox. And it's been a couple of years since I drove one of those, so I'm not gonna pretend that I can feel absolutely where every kilo has gone, but this is definitely a car of different character because of the lighter flywheel, the clutch, the shorter final drive. Instantly you notice you are a bit busier on the gearbox. I have to say what slightly hurts the perception of this being a kind of lightweight, stripped out, hardcore special, it's just how plush these 992 cabins are. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that in a 911 GT car, there was a black hole in the dashboard where all of the infotainment used to live and they just ripped it out and replaced it with a shelf. But 
for the latest cars, they just leave it all in because the touchscreen is so ingrained into all the cars functions. You've still got all of this equipment, your dual zone climate control and your beautifully trimmed cabin. The doors don't clang shut despite being carbon fiber. So although you know it's lighter and it sounds like an angrier car, it doesn't feel stripped out. It kind of makes these trademark fabric door pulls feel a little bit token. Then again, most people did option all of the heavy equipment back in and actually having aircon and all of the touchscreen tech features makes the ST a usable car. And that makes you want to go and drive it. And that is after all, exactly what it's for. As you can see right now, I am pootling. I'm not using all 518 brake horsepower and I have no intention whatsoever of trying to get from naught to 62 miles an hour in 3.7 seconds. And there's a very good reason for that. Not long ago, I drove last week's Ultimate 911, the GT3 RS, and it was sensational, mind-blowing. The best tin top road car I've ever driven around a track. The downforce and the driver aids make it unbelievably confidence inspiring. It is a magnificent achievement. But even as my confidence rose and I braked later, I could hear it laughing at me. It was smirking, you know, my God, is that really the best you've got? Its abilities are so stratospherically high, you just never feel like you're going to tax it. It's like playing table tennis against Superman. And then when you go out on the public road, you look like an absolute tool. Unless you step out and you are literally Volta Roll or Lars Kern or any of those legends who set those eye-popping lap times around the Nürburgring, you drive an RS on the road and you look like the sort of person who might wear their Nomex race suit to bed instead of pajamas. I prefer the ST because it's not the fastest, grippiest, cleverest Porsche. It's not as frantic as a GT4 RS or as nerdy as its big GT3 RS brother. But because you don't feel compelled to prove to it and to everyone else that you are a hotshot, it's just lovely to drive when you're pootling. There's no guilt trip that you're wasting the car. So that's why I'm pootling. If you don't mind, I might every now and again just engage the Fast and Furious scriptwriter's gearbox, a few unnecessary shifts, maybe a few revs. But mostly, I'm just enjoying the car. I don't want to go flat out, I don't need to. That would just get me to my destination sooner and I'd have to get out. Why would I do that?